Hello, this is Lindsay Clark, your primary instructor for current topics in medical laboratory sciences, and this is lecture number 14. We'll be talking about research and research methods. I know some of this will be a review for you guys, but it is important information that you need to know. Um, and for this lecture, I've also included a section on research as it pertains to you all as medical laboratory professionals. And I hope that you will find that little section interesting and maybe even um, inspiring. The objectives for this lecture. Number one, define research and discuss three main purposes of research. Number two, identify characteristics of research. Number three, compare and contrast quantitative and qualitative research methods and give examples of each. Number four, detail the steps involved in the research process. Number five, outline the major components of a scientific research paper. And number six, summarize research opportunities for the medical laboratory scientist. Research, as we know, is the use of scientific methods to study a particular concern or problem. It can also be defined as a systematic inquiry to describe, explain, predict, or control an observed event or phenomenon. Research includes both inductive and deductive methods. Inductive methods are associated more with qualitative research, which we'll talk about more in a minute. Inductive reasoning begins with specific observations and makes broad generalizations. So there is data to start off with and conclusions are drawn from that data. Deductive reasoning, on the other hand, starts with a general statement or hypothesis and examines the possibilities of reaching a specific conclusion. So we start with a theory and then try to predict the consequences based on that theory. The scientific method that you are all familiar with uses deductive reasoning to test hypotheses and theories. Why do research? Well, research is important because it can add to the body of knowledge in a specific field. In healthcare research, those in need may be helped by the results of your study. Research can also help you grow professionally and increase public awareness. There are three basic purposes of research, exploration, description, and explanation. Exploration is unstructured and asks questions about a research topic. It can help guide you towards a certain path for your research and is generally not going to offer any definitive answers. Descriptive research is somewhat structured and asks descriptive questions such as what, where, when, how, and so on. And this type of research is all about describing the phenomenon and drawing conclusions from that. And lastly, explanatory research looks to answer why. It is more structured and uses a hypothesis, and it's conducted later in the stages of research. Characteristics of good research include using a systematic approach, basing it on logical reasoning using inductive and or deductive methods, performing an in-depth analysis of data that is accurate. Research in general is analytical in nature and existing research should guide you to new research, research questions or new opportunities. Most of you will be at least somewhat familiar with the steps in the research process, but it's important to know each step and what each step involves. We start by identifying the problem or question. You can use exploratory research to define the precise problem you want to focus on. Once you have the problem identified, you should perform a literature review. A literature review involves finding previous research done on the same or a similar topic to familiarize yourself with what has already been done. This can help you to refine your question even further. From there, you want to form your hypothesis and develop your research design. This is where you determine what research method to use, what your materials and methods will be, how you will obtain data, et cetera, et cetera. Now, once you've hammered out your research design, you will need to get formal approval from any appropriate boards or committees. And this is an important step that is often left out. If your research involves humans in any way, even if it just involves surveying them, you need to obtain approval from the Institutional Review Board, or the IRB. 
they will determine if you must um, submit more documentation or if your project is ex exempt and that you do not need to submit any further documentation to them. For any research that uses animals, you must get approval from the Institutional Animal Care and Use Committee, IACUC, often referred to as IACUC, and that's required for anything involving animals. If your research involves biohazards or is performed in a biohazard space, you must write a biosafety protocol and get it approved by the Institutional Biosafety Committee, or IBC. Now, IACUC and IBC generally go hand in hand if you're doing animal research, so you are required to get permission from both of those committees before you start your research if you're involving animals and biohazards. Once your approval is obtained, you are cleared to start collecting your data, analyzing your data, writing your article, and disseminating your results. So what type of research methods are out there? Research methods are defined as tools used to accomplish the goals of research in a systematic fashion. Now this can include basic, applied, problem-oriented, and problem-solving research. But in general, research methods are broadly split into quantitative and qualitative research methods. And that's what we're going to focus on for the remainder of this lecture. Qualitative research is research using conversational or non-numerical data to describe the nature of the problem being investigated. So it's going to explore how and why things happen and tends to use words, not numbers. Quantitative research, on the other hand, uses computational data or statistical methods in an attempt to explain phenomena. Quantitative data is all about quantities and therefore uses numbers. So let's look at qualitative and quantitative methods side by side and kind of compare. The goal of qualitative research is to develop concepts or new theories. It's largely unstructured and utilizes small sample sizes. And those sample sizes may not actually be representative of the population as a whole. There is a deliberate relationship formed between the relationship and subjects in order to build trust between them in qualitative research. Qualitative data is collected in narrative form and analyzed using inductive reasoning. Quantitative research, on the other hand, has a goal of testing a theory or examining facts. It involves using a predetermined method in a structured fashion. The sample size is generally large and randomly selected, and the researcher and subjects are kept separate. Quantitative data is numerical and statistically analyzed to provide the results. Looking a little closer at qualitative data, we see that qualitative data sources can include interviews, usually one-on-one, -on -one, small focus groups, surveys, observations, and so on. Analysis techniques used for qualitative research include content analysis, discourse analysis, conversation analysis, and narrative analysis. And while it is widely used, qualitative research does have some disadvantages. It can be subjective, it's not always reproducible, and can't always be generalized. Also, this type of research does not always provide definitive answers. This is an example of a qualitative research article that I pulled from the Clinical Laboratory Science Journal. And this is available online through the ASCLS website. The article is titled, Emotional Intelligence in Medical Laboratory Science. And in it, data is collected from surveys with detailed questions about emotional intelligence and related skills. And the surveys were collected from clinical lab administrators in 42 different states. And this article includes also a qualitative analysis of all the responses to those surveys um, in in the um, discussion section and the results section of this article. So this is a good example of a qualitative research article um, based on what it contains within it. Now looking at quantitative research. 
The data sources can be surveys, observations, secondary data such as government information or exam scores, transaction logs, interviews, and so on. The analysis techniques used include hypothesis testing, correlations, and cluster analysis. And just like qualitative research, quantitative research also has disadvantages. The disadvantages to this type of research include the inability to measure everything or to measure it well. It doesn't answer the question why. It can be impersonal and sometimes the data is very static, meaning it's sometimes just a snapshot of that moment in time and not representative of over time. And the statistical analysis involved can sometimes be manipulated to tell partial truths. So here is an example of a quantitative research article. Um, this also came from the Clinical Laboratory Science Journal, which can be found on the ASCLS website. And this, journal, uh, this journal article is titled, Cinnamaldehyde Inhibits MRSA Biofilm Formation and Reduces Cell Visibility. Sorry, Cell Viability. The methods included in this article um, are biofilm quantitation assays and biofilm inhibition assays. So they are basically looking to quantitate viable bacteria. A statistical analysis of the data of the results they get after quantifying any viable bacteria um, is provided in the results of this article. There's also a lot of figures, the graphs and charts in this article, and based on the headings, you should be able to tell that this is a quantitative research article. Once you have determined your research method and design and gotten all the appropriate permissions, you can start to lay out your paper. So the major components of a scientific paper include the title, which states what the article is about. Your title should not include your conclusions, however. The abstract, which summarizes the article. The background, or the introduction, which establishes your background. Your materials and methods, um, which outlines which research procedure you used, which materials you used. Your results section, which explains the outcomes of your research. The discussion, which interprets and compares results to similar, um, similar research articles. The conclusion, um, which includes important points and what contribution this research has given to the, the overall field, the overall body of knowledge. And then, of course, your references. So any sources that were used should also be included in your paper. So this section is just to get you guys thinking about how, as clinical professionals, research really pertains to you. There are opportunities to present research as a poster or oral presentation at a local, state, regional, or even a national meeting or conference. You can also publish articles in a laboratory science-related journal. And in this case, when I say articles, that can refer to case studies, QI or process improvement projects, new test methodologies um, and the advantages or disadvantages of those, or even laboratory diagnosis of a specific disease process. There are lots of lab-related journals out there, including all of those listed here. I encourage you guys to go out and look for some of these. Many of them are available online um, and see what kind of stuff is being published by lab professionals. I also am going to post some example articles in with this lecture for you to skim over. You guys don't need to read every word. I just want to give you an idea of what the possibilities are for you guys. You guys being students and working professionals, you really do have a lot of opportunity to present or publish if you're interested in it. So take a look at some of those example articles. If it's something you're interested in, um, then certainly you can contact any of the faculty and we can sort of help you get started with that. If it's not something you're interested in actually publishing yourself, you still need to be familiar with what journals are out there um, and what kind of research is being published that really pertains to our profession. 
So in addition to that, I'm going to post a couple of um, articles that I do want you to read um, through, and I will make a note of which ones you need to read through and which ones are just the example articles. And last but not least, we have our references. If you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, please feel free to call me or email me um, and let me know.